Today I'm going to show you how to take basic modifiers, gels, and then transform an ordinary location to have the look and feel of a chic nightclub or bar. I'm Lindsay Adler and I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York. Now being based in New York, a lot of times I end up shooting in my studio space. It's very complicated to go on location and in fact it's usually very expensive. So I don't have many images that often have a sense of place or the, the sense of depth to it. And so I was looking around my studio and I have this red velvet couch and looking at it, I said, you know what? I don't need to go on location. I can transform this and turn it into a location. So I was actually inspired by the couch and looking at it, red velvet couch kind of reminds me of a bar or a nightclub. But of course, my lighting in my studio doesn't have the feel of a bar or a nightclub. So I knew I could I could transport us, take us someplace different by uh, using a different part of my studio and by adjusting the lighting. So when I was setting up this image, I had to figure out, OK, what, what could I do to, to make the lighting more moody, more nightclub? And so I decided to go for a little bit more cinematic look and using gels. So to figure out what color gels I wanted to use in this scene, I looked at what I was working with. I had a black background and a red couch. Looking at the red couch, I think, of course, a red gel to unify the subject with the scene would be a good choice. But if I wanted to add additional gels, there's really two main directions I would consider. The first direction would be to go all warm, right? So be going warm. It's called analogous color scheme, the colors next to each other on the color wheel. So going with reds and yellows and oranges. But as I was thinking about it, uh, I don't think a nightclub or a bar would necessarily have all of those warm colors. It kind of reminds me more of maybe a, a sauna or something like that. So I also think a bar would have maybe contrasting colors. So instead of going analogous, I actually wanted to go opposite on the color wheel. So if it's opposite red, we all know the opposite red, the complementary of red is going to be green. But instantly in our brains, that triggers the thoughts of Christmas colors. And I didn't, I didn't want us to associate this image with Christmas, so I went close to green. And so you'll see I've actually selected a teal. So I decided that's what I was going to go with for the colors in my scene. So let's take a peek behind the scenes and I'll show you the lighting setup that I ended up with. You can see this corner in my studio. It's a little bit tight of a corner, pretty simple. It doesn't really have that much sense of a place. The subject is right up against the background. So I wanted to create a little bit more depth and a little bit more interest. So I have three strobes going on here and I'm actually going to use pretty basic modifiers, bare bulbs and umbrellas, nothing too fancy. So let's start with our main light. Now, as you look at the light in the scene, which one would you guess is the main light? Well, I mean, they kind of are all working together, but in this case, I think of the small white umbrella above the head as the main light. Now, a lot of times in cinematic lighting, there's often a, a kind of a master light, an overhead soft light, because when you go uh, on location, a lot of times the lights, the bulbs would be directly overhead. So that top down lighting gives a sense of being on location. So I use that as the white light in my scene. Uh, and you'll see that it lights the top of her head and it's going to light a little bit of her face. All right, so next I need to add my two gels. Now, uh, it, I don't mind if they were hard light sources. I could just throw two bare bulbs at the subject, add the gels to that. But when I added the red light on the right hand side of the frame here, what happened is originally I used a bare bulb. Now the, the problem I ran into is the wall directly behind my subject. It's painted black, but it's a glossy or semi-gloss paint. So the problem I ran into is with the bare bulb, that light, hard light source reflected off the paint and it was giving me really distracting highlights. So that's why I ended up with a softer light source. I ended up with a larger umbrella with diffusion and the red gel. So it helped cut down on the reflection. And I also raised that light up, gave me again, a sense of place, but also it helped reduce the amount of reflection I had. So I've got my overhead white light. I've got the second light to the scene, the wrapping red gel with the soft light source. And then what that does is it basically just lights the right hand side of the face. I'm kind of missing and I have some shadows on the left hand side. Um, this could be fine. You could just go with that, but I thought she blended the shadows blended too much into the dark background. So that's why I added again, my third light with a teal gel. You'll notice here that there isn't a modifier on that gel. It is bare bulb. When I took the shot, I didn't see that I was really struggling with any reflections. So I thought that was fine. And it gave you know nice saturation filling in the shadows on her face. So that is our third light on the left hand side. 
Now let's talk about my camera choice. Shot with a Canon 5D Mark IV, and I shot with my favorite lens, the 24 to 105. The reason I selected this lens is because I knew I was going to get a wider shot. If the whole point is to give a sense of place, I don't just want a tight head shot. I actually want to include a little bit more of her body, a little bit more of the couch. So the 24 to 105 is going to give me the flexibility and the range to do this. So now let's take a look at what I captured in camera versus what I was able to achieve in Photoshop. This photo doesn't have any changes in white balance or contrast or anything. And I think it's actually pretty close to what I was going for. But of course, looking at this frame, I see a few things that I find distracting. Uh, there's some textures on the wall that I, I think make it look dirty instead of shiny. So I know I want to clean that up. And then of course, I'm working in a tight little corner. Uh, I couldn't really fit the light stand in where I wanted to do and not be in the frame. So I do have to Photoshop out the light stand. So let me show you real quick what it looks like retouched, okay? So this is the retouch and you see the skin gets cleaned up a little bit. I remove the light stand, I smooth out a little bit on the background. Uh, by the way, I was just noticing and wanted to mention as well, I really like the reflections of the gels in uh, her dress. I think that helps unify her with the background and I think it adds another level of interest. If it were a solid black dress, I think you would have lost that, that next element of interest. Now looking at the shot, when you look at the right hand side, since the, the light stand has been removed, now it's just kind of empty space. It's just black. There's nothing there. And so I think it's distracting. It doesn't help with the composition. So one thing that I could do is just crop that out. I also know that I want to crop a little bit of the bottom of the frame. I don't really want to see uh, her knee that pops up on the bottom. It's just a distracting highlight. I could Photoshop it out, but it's also an easy crop. So before I crop the image though, I want to talk about the pose because this is going to, to play into what I end up doing uh, in the end of this photograph. So a lot of times what people do is when they sit someone in a chair, they sit them straight onto camera and everything is really boxy, it's really square. Uh, it, you run into a problem called foreshortening. So if things are coming directly towards camera, they look cut off. Also the person face straight onto camera is going to be really wide. I didn't want this. I wanted to create a nice flow and composition for my subject's pose. So that's why I actually faced her to the side. I pulled the elbow out and the knee up because that gives these beautiful lines for the eye to follow. So the pose was very on purpose to elongate her. So with that word in mind, elongation, when I looked at the shot, instead of cropping off the right hand side of the frame and just bringing everything tighter, I actually decided to transform and elongate the frame. You wanna be careful when you do this because if you elongate it too much, the person's head starts looking wide and stretchy, but I wanna show you what I ended up doing. So this is what it looked like after the retouch and this is when I elongated the frame. So I don't think that it does anything weird to her face, but it just makes the body look a little longer and I think it adds more pleasing lines to the composition. So in the end, with the final crop and everything, this is what the shot looked like. And I feel like my eye flows to her face, goes down the arm to the hand, down the other arm towards the thigh. So I, I just have this nice movement throughout the frame and I think stretching it out and elongating it a little bit gave us longer lines to follow. I personally thought it was more visually pleasing. Looking at this photograph, I could easily believe that it was taken in a bar or a nightclub, but it was actually just a corner of my studio. And so I always challenge myself to do that, try to look at an ordinary location and, and envision how I can transform it with lighting to become an extraordinary location. If you've liked this video, feel free to give me a like, give me a comment. And of course, if you've enjoyed the photo deconstructions, be sure to subscribe.